Good morning and welcome to all of you. And we welcome all our, our viewers uh, viewing at home. And so let us begin this Friday in Lent, as always, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we prepare to celebrate and to enter into these sacred and profound mysteries, let's pause for a moment and call to mind all of our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy, his healing, and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. The Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. And Lord, you plead for each one of us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared fitting help for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking, not aright, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doing, reproaches us for our transgressions of the law, and he charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us, because his life is not like that of others, and different are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds us aloof from our paths and from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just, and boasts that God is his Father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. 
When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own. But the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, my, my good mother always used to say that we can learn from everyone. And from some people, we can even learn what not to do. <laughs> Imagine a real wisdom uh, from my good mother, God rest your soul. And my mother was right. My mother was always right. It's true, we can learn from everyone. But what can we learn from the Pharisees who are trying to kill Jesus in today's gospel. What can we possibly learn from the Pharisees? Well, as my good mother used to say, we can learn what not to do. And uh, if we flip through the pages of the New Testament, we notice that Jesus goes from town to town. He goes to different villages and he's preaching the gospel, and he's also healing the sick. He's curing the paralytic. He's giving sight to the blind. Jesus is even raising the dead. But if you notice, the, many of the people in the crowd are given praise and thanks. The scripture tells us that they're amazed. They say, never have they seen anything like this. So they're giving God proper praise and thanks for Jesus and his hands. But if you notice, not the Pharisees. The Pharisees have no sense of gratitude. They grumble and complain. They refuse to give God thanks and praise. And that's one thing that the Pharisees, they just don't suffer from it. It's a sin of our broken human nature. Because if both you and me are honest, both you and me, we forget to give God proper praise and thanks. 
You know, the Eucharistic prayer at every Mass says, it is our duty always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord. So it's, it's not an option. Praise and thanks is a duty. If in the spiritual life we must give God proper thanks and praise. And, you know, whether it was uh, during difficult times uh, here when we had Hurricane Irma or now the situation with the coronavirus, it opens our eyes, if we're honest. We realize how much we've taken for granted, how much we've forgotten to give proper thanks for. You know, really, when you stop and think about it, We've been given so much. I mean, let's face it. We live today better than any 18th century king. We have comforts and convenience that would be unthinkable even 50 years ago. <laughs> Central heating, air conditioning. We have CDs and DVDs and SUVs and HD TVs. And we think we're entitled to all of it. But God lets us know that it all can be taken away. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is visit any ICU in any hospital. That all is gift and it all can be taken away. You know, uh, the researchers now uh, in, in many of the prestigious universities are realizing that gratitude has a profound effect on our physical health. It lowers blood pressure, heart rate, many, many uh, positive effects on our health when we give thanks. But the foremost researcher is a man named Robert Emmons out of UC Davis, University of California at Davis. And he did the most significant research on the effect of gratitude. And in a controlled study, uh, Dr. Emmons said that uh, if a person were to write down five things each day in a gratitude journal that they were grateful for, five things each day, at the end of three weeks' time, they would be 25% happier. <laughs> now, which one of us doesn't want to be 25% happier? And which one of us cannot write down five things that we're grateful for? Now, the researchers are baffled because they can't quantify why this is, why gratitude leads to happiness. But we know why. It's the old saying, when the praise and thanks go up, the blessings come down. God cannot resist a grateful heart. But uh, we don't have to look at the latest research. We can look at those old gospel hymns. A few weeks ago, I was, uh, uh, came across uh, this old gospel hymn. It was written well over a hundred years ago. And uh, I thought, it says it all, doesn't it? Just the title. The title is Count Your Blessings. And it goes like this. When upon life's billows you feel the tempest tossed, when, are you, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. It will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy that you've been called to bear? Count your many blessings and every doubt will fly. And you'll be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Become for us a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of all of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his church. May this sacrifice, almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, whom you made all things. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world, as to hold rather to the things that endure forever. So now, with all the angels and archangels, with all the martyrs and the saints, with all the powers and hosts of heaven, we declare in one voice the song of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and your resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, in a special way, your faithful servant, Donald G. Brown, and George and Kathleen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Donald G. Brown and George Ferdinand and Kathleen Preston, who were united with your son Jesus in a death like his, that they also may be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with Saint Claire of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all worry and distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the words, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways of life left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon your servants, O Lord, and in your goodness protect them with your heavenly assistance, all those who trust in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless all of you and all your loved ones, living and deceased, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.